Hi, fans of Airborne. My name is Spencer Tejan, uh, a really big fan of Airborne, and I'm really excited tonight to introduce you to a good friend of all of ours. He's uh, decided to join us, and in fact, here he is now. Shane, how are you? Can you hear me? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. <laughs> I like that poster. <laughs> you recognize someone in there, huh? I do. I had two people, actually. <laughs> Hey, good to see you. Hey, super kind of you to take some time to uh, talk with us fans of your movie and your work. Yeah. Uh, uh, really generous of you. I know you're a real busy guy and it was uh, real kind of you to take a second and do this. No, no, I think it's great. So uh, it's, it's always good to talk about Airborne and talk to fans of Airborne and, and everything. So thank you. Well, we are thrilled. We're super excited. Uh, we want to get into some of the fine details about Airborne the movie about your career and and catch up with you on what you're doing uh, what you're doing now. Uh, I got to say, you invited us years ago, fans, that sometime we could sit down and talk about this over a basket of fries. And I just want to say, on behalf of all the fans, we are excited to officially sit down and and talk about this with you. Talk about it over fries. I think that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Well, hey, so uh, to talk about Airborne, mm -hmm. we'd love to know some behind the scenes and some uh, facts and interesting things that you uh, think. Uh, but leading up to Airborne, I think that there's some, uh, some uh, things that we'd wanna know. You were in a uh, pretty successful teen soap opera, Swan's Crossing. It was kind of billed as a, a teen soap opera. You did 65 hectic episodes of that. And then uh, that uh, series was unfortunately canceled. I know a lot of people are still fans to this day of that show that you're in. So tell us about that. Tell us about, did, uh, were you disappointed? You and the other cast members, were you disappointed about its cancellation? Did that lead you to look for roles like Airborne or did you, were you already kind of looking for those kinds of things? I think at the time I was looking for roles like that. I mean, I was pretty young I, when, when I booked when I booked uh, Swan's Crossing, I was 15. Uh, so I think I had just turned 15 uh, and it was a great summer. It was one of the, the summers I will forever remember. We shot 65 episodes in just about 65 days. Uh, so it was an episode a day and it was a blast. I mean, one of my very good friends that I'm still very close to today, which is Alex Tanaka. I met Alex on the, uh, that show and we were shooting at uh, Kaufman Astoria Studios in Queens. Uh, New York, which I loved. I still love Queens. Uh, growing up on Roosevelt Island, which is in the East River, right between Manhattan and Queens, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time in Queens and love it. And that's where the studio is. Uh, just lots of great stories. They shot uh, so many great movies there, even while we were there. Um, that was the first time I ever saw Woody Allen. Uh, there were just, you know, lots of, lots of crazy experiences that you only get, you know, in, in, you know, it was a great experience, so. Wow, wow. Did you guys stay, did they have all the cast stay in a certain dorm or something, or was most people heading home every day, or? Yeah, everybody was home every day. So we had, we had dressing rooms that we all kind of worked out of, and of course, the early days, so, you know, you're up early, you're probably in the studio about five, uh, and when you're shooting that many shows in that quick, there's a lot of lines to, to learn. So you're, you're studying over your scripts quite a bit. And um, uh, so, uh, but it was an adventure. I mean, to be very honest, you know, it was the first TV show that I ever did. And I never, I, I, once it became popular, it was a absolute surprise. I mean, it really was a lot of fun. It was, it was a surprise that the, the, the show did had the following that it did, which meant so much. I mean, it, it really, it, it was really nice, so. Well, I think that, uh, you know, uh, being younger when it came out, I was aware of it because of my older sister who was glued to it watching it. But uh, I've seen, uh, I've seen lots of uh, what an impact that had. I mean, I've seen that you guys did a meet and greet at the Hard Rock Cafe in Times Square. You guys had like action figures, little, uh, you know, dolls that had come out for your characters. Yeah. It was a big deal, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, the Planet Hollywood experience was great. I think that was the first time I ever rode in a limo in a, uh, the, 
the cast all packed into a limo and we drove from Queens into, uh, I think it was 57th Street in like 6th Avenue. And that's where Planet Hollywood was. And I just remember getting out of the, the car and there just being so many fans. Uh, and it was, uh, it was definitely an experience, a, a very, very good experience. So. Had you realized at that point how big of an impact the show was having with people? Or was that kind of a first glimpse when you got out of that limo? That was it. That was the first time I realized that the show was being watched and there was the following that it was. So, uh, you know, you, 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 you're kind of shocked. You know, you're just really surprised that, uh, um, I guess you're not expecting it. And that's, that's the lovely, you know, the great thing is, you know, you're just not expecting it. So you, you, you get out and you see that response to the show and you're kind of at a loss for words, uh, all these cameras going off and, uh, and uh, it was, it was great. So. Oh, that sounds awesome. So you say that you had kind of been glancing around, seeing around you for other types of roles and things. So when uh, the show was canceled, did you already have some things like Airborne lined up or did yeah. that kind of spring, springboard you into finding a role like Airborne? No, Airborne came maybe about six months after, uh, six months, maybe even a little bit more after Swan's Crossing. Uh, but, you know, at least those days as, as, a, as a young actor, you're, you're always looking for work. Uh, you know, I started out you know, I, I, I started out in commercials and then it's once crossing was the first TV show that I did and the first kind of a success that I ever um, had. Um, and then after that, you're wondering what, 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 what's next. And lucky enough, airborne popped up. Uh, and it was, it's a whole, whole different ball game to um, uh, go from a, a TV show to a movie. Um, it's just very, very different. And to be the lead in the movie at, you know, at such a young age and to be surrounded by so many talented actors. And honestly, I think the, the thing that really helped me get through the film was the, the quality of, of the other actors. I mean, so many of the actors in there had, you know, so much experience. So you just kind of do what they do and, uh, and look at it. It, it turned out great. You so. held your own. I think we all would agree. That's very very cool that's saying a lot so thank you very much for that <laughs> <laughs> so going into airborne mitch uh -huh. Buson was a very different character than garrett booth oh yeah uh, attitudes different takes on oh, life i could say <laughs> what did uh which one did you prefer who did you like to play the most well i think i think swan's crossing was fun that was the greatest thing about the tv show it's, it was just a fun show for you know having so many young actors together on set every day in it, it was very very intense airborne was very intense also but swan's crossing was just fun because everything was very new uh airborne was interesting because it was first of all mitchell guzan i love mitchell guzan i mean he is a um role model and if you're ever going to play a character I, I'm, I'm i'm i was honored to to play mitchell guzan and uh I, I'm very happy that, you know, the, the role has stuck around and the movie has stuck around. So, I mean, it means a lot to me um, seeing the following that it has still to this day, 30, 28 years after uh, Airborne came out. I mean, it's, it's, it's really wonderful. So, uh, but if I was going to choose a character, because I think that was your question, I would definitely choose Mitchell Guzik because <laughs> he's about as cool as you can get. He's a cool dude. That's yeah. it's true. I think uh, I think a lot of people, guys and girls, all just really admired that Mitchell Goose. And the guys all wanted to be him. <laughs> and uh, very cool. Well, and you added a lot to him, too. I think uh, a lot of, uh, you know, I think a lot of your personality comes out in Mitchell. What did you uh, do? Tell us about auditioning. So I've uh, I've uh, heard some things about that uh, you rollerbladed to uh, meet up with the director, I guess. And yeah, when when I was when I was in New York, I used to go from you know I used to go around New York City and always take the subways to the different auditions and so forth. But in the summer, it was just easier to um, I, I kind of picked up rollerblading, and I would rollerblade from audition to audition. And sometimes you were way on the Upper West Side and had to go all the way down to Lower Lower East Side. And uh, skating was a great way to get around New York. Uh, so. 
I would skate a lot in the streets in New York. Um, I would do, uh, you know, a lot of crazy things, hold on to back of cabs to, to get downtown quick and all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, I really enjoyed street skating. And so I was pretty, I was pretty good. We're not talking Chris Edwards good, uh, but you know, I could hold my own on skates, you know, and uh, I, whenever the audition came up, um, you know, I think, you know, in those days they would audition you on video and they would send the video out to the producers in Los Angeles. And I think I had done one or two of the videos and the producers and directors to Rob Bowman, Steve McVitie, they all flew into New York um, to, to do the audition. And to be very honest, I think that this is why it went so well. I just wasn't really paying attention and I was absolutely calm. I kind of walked into the audition, not expecting to see a lot of people there. I thought it was just maybe, because I think that that was it. I didn't expect to see the producer and the director and everything. You know, I thought it was just maybe one more callback. I was gonna go in, say my lines and move on down the road. Um, and I kind of came into the room, but the, there was a very good, vibe in the room. I felt very comfortable. And so we started, we got into doing the lines and everything. And uh, I think at that point that they had actually uh, already uh, booked the role of uh, Nikki. And, uh, and I cannot, I'm trying to remember who read the lines with me. Um, uh, but anyway, there was, we were reading the lines back and forth. And typically auditions last at most, you know, 15 minutes. And so when I was there about an hour, I kind of knew, if, you know, this is good, going huh? on here. Yeah, this is good. And then at that point, uh, Rob uh, asked, you know, he said, so, so you, you rollerblade? I said, yeah. And he goes, do you want to go out and rollerblade together? And I said, hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so uh, we, we met up, put on the skates and skated around New York City for a little bit. And I showed him a couple of spots I, I, I really liked. And uh, and then that was that. Makes you know, I, I booked the show, so it was uh, it it was a surprise uh, and a wonderful surprise. So. Wow! So that was the callback. The let's go rollerblade together and show me your stuff, huh? Yeah. And That's so uh, next thing you know, I was on a plane to Cincinnati. <laughs> wow! Wow! Very yeah. cool. So you said that someone was reading for maybe uh, the part of Nikki. Was that yes. someone that was auditioning to do it or was that some staff member of Warner Brothers? No, I think it was somebody who was auditioning. I think that they had um, uh, an actress in there uh, who, you know, I don't know if she was a New York actress. I'm, I'm trying to remember the details of the audition. Um, it's a few years ago. So, uh, uh, and, I, and I can't actually remember who it was that I read with, uh, but it was, uh, it was a great audition. And it was just one of those that was very comfortable, just like the film. You know, I've always kind of been a big believer that, you know, if it's meant, you know, it's meant you walk into the audition, things went really smooth. And that's how it went on the set of Airborne. I mean, it was just like the moment we showed up, the cast really got along well. Uh, everything worked out. Uh, and then when you have talented uh, director and cinematographer and uh, producer like we had, and then so much talent. You know, when it comes down to the the actor Seth Green and Jack Black and just all the other actors that were in there, it is um, I, I guess the best way you can describe it is kind of an energy. You have this really great energy on set uh, where you know things are just working, and and everybody kind of feels it, and it's it's an excitement. Everybody's pretty excited, and that's that's how Airborne was from beginning to end. Um, and it was a it was a pretty quick shoot maybe about two months. Um, no, I mean, even less than that, maybe a month and a half. Um, but I was shooting every day. So it was, it was a busy, it was a busy schedule. So wow. long days, fun days. It was, it was fun. Yeah. So. Wow. Wow. Well, it sure shows in the end product. I think that, uh, yeah. like you say, that energy that was there. So did you at any point like read, you know, for uh, compatibility with Brittany Powell or Seth Green, some of the other actors that you were like in major scenes were, or did you guys kind of just show up and you're like, we are it? Well, I think that that's the, that's the interesting thing is everybody else was uh, from uh, California and I was from New York, uh, I, a New York kid playing a California guy. And so I, I think whenever I showed up on set, there were a lot of, a lot of them were like, who is this? Who is this guy? <laughs> 
So it, I think that there was a, you know, when we first sat down for the first reading, you know, they didn't, you know, they were kind of checking me out, you know, trying to figure out, you know, um, who is this guy, you know, because, you know, I was always in New York and they were in LA and we never crossed paths. Um, you know, it's kind of a small industry, so you, or at least it was back then. Uh, so you would know all, a lot of the other actors in your town. You'd go to the same auditions and all kinds of stuff like that. But me being in New York and them being, you know, in California, we just, they didn't know who I was. <laughs> so. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, so you said your first day of shooting, you, uh, so you got, suddenly you found yourself on a plane to Cincinnati. Uh-huh. And your first day of shooting was on the tarmac of the airport? Is that yeah. right? Yeah, it was. I got in uh, before, really before any of the other actors uh, showed up. And uh, I guess the, the, um, the, 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 there was kind of a B, a B team, a camera team. Mm -hmm. And they were already in, kind of starting to get to know Cincinnati. And it just so happened that as I flew in, I mean, it must have been the next day, we had a huge snowstorm uh, that came through. And they were kind of going around, getting to know, you know, the the, the town and so forth. And and they were they were trying to shoot some airport shots. And uh, they called me up and said, "Hey, you know, do you want to join us?" I said, "Sure." You know, I mean, yeah, of course. You know, and this was very early. It was it was before the rest of the cast had, had shown up. And uh, so they got me dressed up. And honestly, that outfit that you have right over your shoulder, I think that may have been what I was wearing. <laughs> I think oh, it was the, oh, yeah, was trying to. <laughs> so, uh, and I just remember being on the tarmac and, and I was so impressed because they brought a plane, you know, and parked it, you know, on the, the, you know, parked it right next to us. The door was open. It was snowing and there was kind of a camera crew. So every once in a while when the camera crew was working on getting the shot lined up, I'd walk into the plane and, you know, kind of check it out. It was, it was a surreal experience and it, and it was wonderful. I mean, and that was kind of the first, that, that's what kicked it off that I knew that first, you know, that this was going to be fun. Uh, and that's exactly what it was. I mean, throughout the whole, whole shooting, it was just, it was lots of fun. So, so the fact that a plane was there for it, that you were like, this is Hollywood. I've arrived. This is what the red carpet they roll out. Huh? It's unbelievable. I was like, yes. <laughs> I want some more of this. <laughs> very, very cool. Very cool. So I have heard of d some uh, info about deleted scenes is very rare in the airborne world. I've heard of, though, a, a deleted scene that involved you back in California before getting to Cincinnati. So I want to see if you remember any of this. Um, you, uh, you know, so you started in Cincinnati. I'm guessing that means the California parts you filmed were done at the end. Yep. Okay. So uh, I've uh, read of a scene where you and your buddy that you rollerbladed with in the beginning, Sean, played by mm -hmm. Brian Winkler. I read that there was a scene of you guys actually floating in the water. You were kind of lamenting having to go to Cincinnati and how could your parents do this to you? Do you remember that scene much? We don't get to see that as an audience. I do you remember much about it? Or is that a is that too vague of a memory? No, no, I do remember it. Um, it was uh, it it was I, I forgot. I thought we were shooting in Santa Monica. I thought that that's where we actually shot the scenes in Santa Monica. Uh, and I remember, yeah, they did have a scene where we're sitting in the water, and. Uh, the two of us were talking uh, and uh, don't remember the details. I had just learned how to surf maybe a year and a half earlier. So at least, you know, I was pretty comfortable sitting on a surfboard and, uh, and so forth. And, and I do remember, and I'm happy you brought that up. I had kind of forgotten about that scene, <laughs> so. Well, it sounded very cool. I could, you know, anything to add to the length of that movie, yeah, but. Uh, I, I wonder if there's an, the uh, director, the uncut, uh, where, where's that cutting room floor footage? Right. Huh? <laughs> so uh, one of the favorite scenes I think of anybody who loves Airborne is that classroom scene when uh, your cousin brings you to school for the first time. This is the first time you're looking at this, this foreign land called Cincinnati. I wonder yep. if we turn on that scene and maybe you tell us about that. Maybe I won't have the audio from the movie on, but you just maybe Talk to us about memories of that scene. Is that, does that sound okay? I'll try my best. Yeah, let's do it. 
let's see if I can uh, if I can get there. Yeah, this is good. Uh, uh, uh. I got a bar in my way, so I can't see what I'm trying to do. Okay, are you seeing my screen right now? I am. It's pretty good. Okay, so new guy at school, tell us about this. Uh, some fans have been to this school in Cincinnati, uh, Western Hills High School. Uh-huh. Look at that hair. <laughs> <laughs> that is some righteous hair. Yeah, that's right. So these are all uh, actors. Are they, what, do you remember anything about these students? Yeah, they, I, I do remember there were a, a large number of extras. And they had so all kinds extras. Of in it. Yeah, there were, there were large number of extras on set. And, um, and, uh, and I remember in this situation, like, like Seth, you know, I learned a lot from Seth on that, uh, in the film. I mean, he was, he was a pro, you know, him getting into, now this is Bill Applebaugh's, Bill, of course, is the writer of the, the film. Um, you know, great guy. You're saying he played the speech teacher here, huh? He did. He did. So. And we didn't really rehearse this all this much in front of the, the, the class. Um, I know I had my, my script, which I mostly, which I definitely followed, unlike a lot of the other actors. I mean, uh, you know, you got Jack Black and so many of the other actors that were improv guys that would just come up with genius stuff on the spot. And um, you were saying that they would improvise a lot of the lines that ended up being used. Absolutely. Uh, and Seth was very good with that. Seth, I mean, you know, he, he was who I spent most of most of my scenes were with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Seth. So uh, it was. Um, it was great. And uh... you mentioned uh, once in an interview, I heard that you said this classroom scene was a little uncomfortable. It brought you back memories of uh, maybe times you had to be up in front of the classroom in school or people and, and maybe them scowling at you. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, a, a it, it definitely brought back a lot of memories of uh, me going to uh, to uh, to school when I was when I was young. I always hated getting up in front of people, um, or always felt a little bit uncomfortable, you know. But in this case, I mean, that's the great thing about um, about the director and everybody. They really, even though there were a lot of people in the classroom, it was it was still. Very comfortable. I think that this was the hardest scene for me to do, uh, just for that one reason. And, you know, it's kind of like most of the time you were in there with your camera crew and so forth. But in this case, there were a lot of extras and other actors and so forth. Um, a lot of busyness going on. You kind of had a second audience there, huh? Oh yeah, everybody and everybody's kind of waiting around. I mean, we spent days in the in in the school shooting these different scenes, and. Uh, and I mean, it really came, and actually it means something uh, to me that you said this is one of the favorite scenes, you know, is, you know, saying, you know, so many people love this. Uh, so I, I think it's great, so. Well, I think that this is, you know, I think as an audience, they're still trying to get to know who's this Mitchell Goosen guy. We know he's from California. And, and I think this is where a lot of Mitchell's personality comes out. What did you, do you remember like, you know, I, like we're saying, it's a little different than the Garrett Booth character. What do you remember channeling something inside you or another character or a book or a character in a book or movie that you were like, this is who I think Mitchell Goosen is going to be? Or was it just completely? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that um, when I showed up to, uh, when I showed up to Cincinnati, um, I was working 
uh, very hard to just memorize all the lines. And I would spend days and days just getting into that character. And funny enough, uh, there was a moment where it just clicked. And I kind of, in a way, kind of became Mitchell Guzan, which, you know, even to the point where, you know, something, something would happen, somebody would bump into me. And this is not when I was on camera, but you'd be like, yo, hold on, brah. You know, where you actually get into the character. Uh, so I, I was definitely channeling Mitchell Goosen. Um, and it, he, he just came out. I, you know, it's, uh, and even to this day, whenever I watch Airborne, uh, the, I start to talk like Mitchell again. <laughs> start to act like Mitchell. So maybe I should watch Airborne more often. <laughs> So some method acting came out while you were absolutely while you were uh, doing it, performing it, huh? Yeah, and it was. I mean, I, at that time, it, this is the biggest role I've ever played. Uh, so you know, definitely not much method acting in Swan's Crossing that I really remember. Uh, but I dialed into Mitchell, uh, one hundred percent. So it was, uh, and I looked pretty comfortable up there. So I guess that's uh, that's good, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely fit the part. You definitely looked like that guy you were playing there. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I haven't seen this. And uh, you did not have to get thrown through the window. A stunt guy probably did that for you. Uh, absolutely. They had a stunt guy that did it. And it was funny. A few years back, I watched the, the film with my youngest son, uh, Davis. And, uh, you know, he was at the age where he still doesn't totally get, you know, whether the film is real or not. And uh, when they threw me through the movie, I mean, through the window, he could not believe it. He did not understand why they would throw me through the window. <laughs> why they threw, throw dad through the window? Yeah, throw me through the window. So, um, and actually, I think my youngest son is just old enough that I'm, I'm kind of excited to, uh, to watch the movie with them. And actually, that might be kind of fun. Maybe we should uh, uh, watch it all together and see how that plays out. That would be awesome. <laughs> Mitchell Goosen's kids react to Mitchell Goosen. Yeah. Mitchell Goosen getting thrown through a window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too, too cool. So let's see uh, another very important scene. C continuing to get to know the Mitchell Goosen character. Uh, mm -hmm. The hockey game mm -hmm. and this mysterious girl from the stands starts striking up a conversation with you. I, uh, I read or heard once that uh, this is where the director really confirmed to you, like, hey, you got it. You got this Mitchell Goosen roll down. I think some of the, some of your, uh, the way you delivered some of these lines and things. What do you remember about this scene with uh, Brittany Powell in the hockey arena? Well, I, first of all, it was the, it was the first scene that I, we shot. Um, and I think, you know, maybe they load the big scenes in the beginning just to kind of get them out of the way. And this was the, the first big scene. So and you had the airport tarmac stuff and then you came right to here next day or something the the airport uh, tarmac stuff was just kind of prep stuff it just happened to play out that way and i just happened to be there uh -huh. but this is when the That's whole cast was in town um they had flown in all the producers um uh, for the film and you know we were up early uh they this was the scene that they we were going to shoot you know in the, during the day and um uh, I remember going, sit in my trailer and they said, okay, it's time. And I uh, walked out of the trailer. Uh, and that was the first time I met a number of the producers. And, uh, you know, you kind of get out and as you're walking on set, you know, introducing yourself, saying hello and everything. Uh, and then I got into position, you know, hit my mark. And then the moment they said this greatest thing about acting is that, you know, there are moments when somebody says, you know, action, uh, that you kind of disappear and you really get sucked into the character. Uh, and this is just one of those moments that, you know, I was, I was prepared, I was 100% comfortable. Uh, Mitchell was, was, was definitely there. Um, and it turned out great. I mean, this is one of my favorite scenes. Uh, you know, I, I love watching the scene just for that one reason that you had mentioned. When we had finished shooting later on that afternoon, I remember, you know, I didn't know really how it was going. And uh, the executive producer, Steve McAvity, was kind of waiting at the, the base of the bleachers. And, you know, I came down and, you know, I said, well, how did it go? And, uh, and uh, I just remember him, 
looking at me, he broke into a huge smile, gave me a big hug, said, well done, let's do the next one. So, and that was a big deal uh, to, to get that, to get that scene down right off the bat. As I said, it just set the tone uh, for the rest of the movie. So um, it was, it was very, very nice. Wow. 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 That's amazing. That probably gave you a lot of confidence for the rest of like, I'm, I'm doing this character the way everybody perceives. It was, it was a big shot in the arm. I mean, it really it made a, it made a big difference. Uh, so uh, we did a lot of the heavy acting stuff up front and then I got to roll a blade and have fun in the end. Uh, so, uh, uh, so. Right, right. So the hockey game didn't go well. <laughs> And Mitchell shows up to school thinking everything's okay. Oh yeah. Only to find out he's been pranked. Yep. And the pranks don't stop. They don't. <laughs> what do you remember about some of these scenes? Were they messy? Were they sticky? Were they were there pranks that didn't make it into the final film? You know, it's funny. Um, whenever you're doing the pranks uh, or the, like these different scenes, they were chopped up. Uh, where, you know, the director's vision is kind of hard to see, see all the scenes put together until the very end, you know, and that's why it was so enjoyable to see it for the first time in the movie theater, because all those scenes that you had done finally came together, all the pieces really started to fit together. And, uh, you know, because, you know, they were shot out of order, and shot different different times, you know. Some sometimes it was very spaced out. A lot of these scenes were shot late at night, uh, so um, I, you know. But to see them all put together, it, it really was it was fun. I mean, this is this is definitely the fun. We we had fun doing this, and there were a lot of late nights that I was working with uh, Seth in that school and just having a blast. I mean, we had we had good times. So rollerblading, a lot of rollerblading took place? A lot, yeah. We were rollerblading all the time, so. You guys got uh, some coaching and some training from Team Rollerblade, I've read? I would, I mean, I think just being amongst them. I mean, those guys were so talented and so good. Um, you know, uh, you know, it was a different level. I'd never dropped into a half pipe before the film. And, uh, you know, to go from straight skating the street to doing stuff that Chris Edwards was doing, not that I was doing that. I mean, he was, you know, uh, uh, just amazing. You know, I guess he calls it going vert. Uh, and um, I mean, just being there why those guys were skating up to your game. I mean, it, it made you start to realize that, you know, first of all, what you could, what people could do on skates uh, and, uh, and I, I mean, it was nice my goal, you know, was just to keep up a little bit. <laughs> so, and I mean, we really had fun when we were doing devil's backbone, you know, going down the hill cause we were all together and everybody was kind of skating together. And that's where my strength kind of came in is that, you know, I could go fast on skates and I was pretty comfortable. And, um, it was just nice that, you know, you had so many of these professionals that were doing unbelievable stuff. You know, uh, Chris was jumping over cars and trucks and, you know, uh, so it was just a blast to watch the stunts happen. Um, I mean, we, we had a good time. Uh, we had a good time doing all this stuff, so. So the rollerblading skill sounds like it was kind of contagious that being around all those people felt like it up to everybody's game a little bit, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and they had team rollerblade there. I mean, there were there were a bunch of guys. Uh, it was so a big deal. It was a it, huge it really deal. was. It was, and those guys were already kind of a crew. Uh, so you know, they were always having fun with each other and so forth. So it was just nice to be in their presence. They were always having a good time, and and especially shooting shooting a, a, a movie. I mean, you know, everybody was in a good mood. And as I said, you know, it's just it was a, it was a special a special moment. And I remember when he was, when uh, Chris was, was doing this, you know, I was watching and I mean, you're just blown away by that, the height that he would get. Um, he was so comfortable on those skates. He was amazing. 
he gives you a lot of credit. I've, I've heard several interviews he's done where he talks about how, what a good skater you were and how the two of you together, you know, many of those jumps and things you'd lead up to it. And that would be part of the movie magic that they cut from you making it up to the edge and then they push him off of it. <laughs> and I tell you what a compliment. <laughs> I mean, for somebody like Chris to give, you know, to say that means a lot. So, um, uh, you know, he, it, it was, it was really, I mean, just this scene right here just shows you how good uh, he was. And, uh, and not only that, how, you know, the guts that he had, but, you know, he just never fell, <laughs> which was amazing. I fell all the time, uh, you know, and he just had that ability that no matter what he was able, like what situation popped up, he was able to kind of correct it and land it and stick it. Uh, and it was, it was impressive. So. Um, Tell us about your fall. You had a fall that actually ended up scraping up your back. Yeah. Yeah. I ended up, uh, you know, they had this kind of, uh, motorcycle, uh, apparatus or motorcycle that had kind of a camera on the back and it, um, you know, when you're skating, you know, it's just stuff. And, and it, it was, especially at the level that we were going at that point, you know, I was, I could skate downhill, but accidents happen. And, uh, it was just one of these that I forgot exactly what it, I think it was when, uh, we were kind of fighting and I think one of the other uh, skaters grabbed me and somehow I fell backwards. Uh, in, you know, in the camera, all you see is me go down and then you see me pop up real quick, you know, of course in pain, uh, cause as I landed on, I basically kind of landed on my back and my shirt came up and just scraped the two, uh, uh, scraped up my back pretty bad. <laughs> and hurt enough that I got right back up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was at the end of the film. I was I was trying to do as much skating as I could, um, and trying to keep up with the guys. And and I got beat up. Uh, got beat up a, a, a little, but it was it was great. I mean, I enjoyed every minute of it. You so. took your licks on Devil Backbone like everybody else, huh? That's right. That's yeah. right. Although guys like Chris never went down, so just <laughs> uh, those guys were unbelievable. So amazing. Scenes like this that we're watching right now are one of the reasons people love this movie so much is just unbelievable. You cannot take your eyes off of it. I mean, if you think about the ending of this movie, there's like 17 minutes of very little dialogue, hardly any speech, and you just are glued to it watching. Yep, yep. And some great shots in the end. I, one of my favorite is when Chris jumps over that the car coming over the hill. Oh yeah, the, just, uh, the just, cinematography is ah, phenomenal. It just the it's like you said the electricity, the yeah. magic of the right people, the right cast, the yeah. right uh, production crew, the right story, right character. Yep. Yep. No, it was a, it was a it was a special it was a special time, and I was lucky to have been a part of it. So. Um, you know, I look back fondly, very fondly on the making of the film. So, um, and, uh, and it, it went by way too quick. So many fans would be sad if I didn't ask about this scene where you were laughing uncontrollably. Tell <laughs> us what was really going on behind the scenes during your takes on this. Oh, this was, uh, is Seth a green and Jack Black magic. <laughs> <laughs> Were they in the background prodding you? I mean, did you, uh, oh, they, you know, I think that both of them are, you know, definitely, uh, probably two funniest people I've ever met in my life, uh, where they could just take nothing and turn it into something hysterical. And, uh, and of course we're in the basement of, you know, this tiny, tiny house, uh, I, and you know, the, basement kind of low ceilings and uh um pretty tight uh, and uh and of course i wasn't expecting it but um the director had gotten both seth and, and jack to put together a, a little routine which i think might have been mostly improv and uh i mean there were there were the camera crew was laughing as hard as i was that's that's how funny these guys were i mean they were just you know, just a good good example. I mean, there's no acting here. This is me thoroughly enjoying 
Jack and Seth just having a blast. I think that's pretty evident. It's not a uh, just ha ha. I'm act, I'm laughing yeah. because my role says to laugh. I mean, it, no, no, it was. Tell, you're dying about something, so we were. It was. It was true. It was true. So, and it was tied in there. I mean, there were, and we had a lot of people. We must have had 20, 20, 20 people packed into that basement. And then you, of course, I mean, everybody was hysterical laughing. It was a a special moment. And you can just tell, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm happy we got it on film. <laughs> yeah. Mitchell Goosen wears an earring. Oh, Tell yeah. us about earring life. I'm, I was one of many kids who in junior high had to have an earring. Mitchell Goosen, <laughs> our mentor has that earring. Did you uh, have an ear? Did you get an earring for this movie? I think I did. I, I went through a period of time. I think it was right around Swan's Crossing that I, I had a lot of bling going on. You know, I wore some some rings and, and big hair and uh, really, uh, you know, I, I, I it, it was kind of a phase I went through. And the one thing that stuck was the earring. Uh, so and funny enough, I was thinking, you know what, maybe it's time to bring the earring back, you know. <laughs> I yeah. think you can still pull it off. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Would you? How long did you? How long did you have an earring following the movie? I think I had it. Uh, maybe. I mean, I definitely had it uh, for two or three years after the film, and I think maybe I got it uh, right around the time I was doing Swans Crossing. So, um, and it was always that gold little gold hoop. Uh, so. Um, Awesome, awesome. Here we are in the pier with you and Brittany Powell. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. She was older than you. That that was that uncomfortable? Oh no, no. I mean everybody everybody in the, the film was was um, always made you comfortable. Um, so uh, well, I mean everybody was older than me. <laughs> I think Seth was the next um, uh, youngest, uh, maybe three or four years older than I am. I I don't know, um, but uh, it was always pretty comfortable there. So, and these scenes are always a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit awkward, uh, you know, just because, you know, a little awkward, but at the same time, one of the greatest parts of uh, that scene was that they were able to get downtown Cincinnati, all the buildings to turn their lights on uh, for the scene, which, you know, the, if the, scene, the movie is beautiful. Uh, you know, it's just beautiful to look at. The cinematography in the film is, is stunning. Um, and it was, it was just it, it, not small things, but actually large things like that, that really make the, the film enjoyable to, to, to watch. So, um, very nice. What do you think of the ending? Do you like how it ended? As far as, uh, you know, the boys save the day, Central High School beats the preps. <laughs> no one will question or challenge them on who's man enough in Cincinnati. Uh, and then, like Mitchell's the hero, he gets the girl and the blacks fades to black. What do you think <laughs> of the ending? Do you think we should have seen more of, what do you think Mitchell Goosen would have done if we saw more in the movie? Was Mitchell going to stay in Cincinnati? He made all these friends. Was he a California guy that was just going to get back as fast as he could? I don't know. I think maybe we bring Seth out to uh, California. And uh, so I show him the ropes around there. I could see yeah. that. That would you be know, I, 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 I love the ending. You know, I love the, the message, which, to be very honest with you, until, you know, until uh, maybe uh, a while later, I never... Um, it took me a while to realize what the message was of Airborne. Um, but it's, it, you know, just the, um, uh, you know, it's important to be a good person, uh, you know, because in the end, you know, everybody wins. Um, and uh, so not only does Mitch Guzan win, but everybody wins uh, just by using that positive energy, uh, you know, and I think that's, uh, that's a great way to live life. And uh, so I think it's wonderful. I think it's great. I think it's great ending. Well, I like it. I would definitely want to see a sequel with 
<laughs> Wiley in California. There you go. <laughs> what kind of post-production stuff did you have to do once all the filming was done in Cincinnati and you did some California parts? Did you get called back to do reshoots of anything or did you do voiceover stuff? Do you remember much of that? We did a little, we did a lot of that. And every, all of that was really kind of based out of um, Los Angeles. Uh, so, you know, and I, I didn't know Los Angeles. I think it was the first time I'd ever been there. I'm pretty sure it was. And I spent a good deal of time there. I mean, I was there for three or four months doing reshoots and then doing the California scenes and then doing voiceover uh, pieces. And it was all new. Everything was brand new. I had never experienced anything like it. So um, and exciting, new and exciting. And at that point, Seth and I were pretty good friends. Uh, so we spent a lot of time work, you know, working with each other, but also uh, friends off, off, off set. And I, I was kind of introduced to California uh, by, you know, Seth. He introduced me to his friends and uh, we spent a good deal of time just, you know, kind of getting to know um, LA and, um, and it was fun. It was lots of adventures, so. Yeah. That sounds so awesome. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the first time you were at a theater, you'd finished the movie, you'd wrapped the movie, you were at a theater with some friends and suddenly a trailer came on for Airborne that you did not know was coming out yet or? I didn't know it was coming out. Yeah, we were in New York. I was on the Upper West Side with some friends and we went to watch a movie. And, uh, and it was pretty exciting because the trailer is, was great. You know, it just like knocked it out of the park. It comes on, it's exciting, it's fast, it's a blur. I mean, just of all the skating and, you know, great lines and everything. And I think we were all kind of surprised by it. And I just remember kind of almost, you know, there, even after the, the trailer had shown, silence. And then they all went, oh my God, you know, and even me, I was just like, oh, that's so awesome. Uh, so it was, it was fun. Um, yeah, and that, was, that, that wasn't the first time I saw the film though. I actually saw the film in the theaters with Seth. So um, we were in California and I think they were doing some sort of, uh, um, screen test. And uh, Seth and I were approached uh, at Universal Studios to, you know, screen this new movie, you know, that was coming out. And, it, you know, Seth was like, well, what's the movie name? And they said, oh, it's, it's Airborne. Uh, and he said, oh, really? Okay. Uh, and, you know, they wow. said, um, you know, just put your names here and a phone number and we'll call you and, you know, set up this time that, you know, you show up and, you know, you just watch the movie and grade it. And there's like a test audience screening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and so, you know, Seth and I both signed up and uh, they gave us a call and told us when, when it was going to happen. And so we got dressed up in, in disguises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, we went and got in line and, uh, you know, walked into the movie theater and just so happens that we were sitting right in the middle of the theater. Right no in the middle. I mean, just like... No way. Sitting, you know, middle row, middle section, you know, right in the middle. And, you know, everybody, the audience was full. And then we saw, you know, the producers in the back row. Uh, and um, lights go down. Movie comes up. And we watched Airborne for the first time. And it was the first time I ever saw myself on film. And, wow. uh, and of course, you know, it's huge. You know, your face is huge. Everything's huge. And, uh, uh, and it was an absolute uh experience so uh and then the movie uh credits roll we got up and then bumped into the executive producer and said hey <laughs> reveal took off the wigs and revealed hey, what are you doing here <laughs> you're not supposed to be here <laughs> wow course, gave it amazing. gave it top ratings you know <laughs> five stars all of, all around absolutely absolutely yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. That is hilarious. And they didn't have any necessarily a big red carpet event like for the movie. Did you as the cast and crew, did anybody meet up for like a, we're going to watch it when it releases or was everybody kind of spread off on other projects by that time? I think there was spread out on other projects. And I think at the time it was actually released, I was in New York. Uh, so I, I just, I don't remember them having a premiere. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and I don't know if it's because they had one and I was just in New York and couldn't fly in. 
you know, I can't, can't remember the reason behind that, but uh, um, it came out in theaters and, um, uh, and uh, you know, it really wasn't until, you know, kind of a while later, it really became um, a hit, uh, you know, in the, in the colleges and schools, you know, it just, it would repeat, it would play over and over on HBO and so forth. And then after a while, it really got this kind of great cult following. And, um, and um, I mean, I'm just amazed, you know, 28 years after we filmed it, that, uh, you know, it, there's so many people that really connect with it still. I think it's great. It just shows you, you know, uh, Bill wrote a great film and, uh, you know, it's, it, was a, it was a special, it was special. So and it was great to be a part of it. I think it's an okay film. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> no, I love that movie. Yeah, I, know, I think right? so many people do. <laughs> people love you in that role. So, so a lot of fans of you then and people who follow and, and are fans of you now often ask, well, hey, we love this movie. We saw Shane in it. What happened? And uh, tell us about After Airborne. Did you get a taste of movie life and Hollywood life and decide that wasn't for you? Or did, uh, what path did led you to uh, uh, step away from the, that kind of spotlight? I don't know. I think, um, I, th I think that first of all, when I got into all of this, I was very young. And, uh, you know, when you're young, you know, you haven't really fully developed yet. You don't know what it is that you, you like or you don't like. Uh, and, uh, you know, you know, it's always, um, I was able to work as an actor. I did, you know, continue to, to, to work all the way up till maybe I was about uh, 20, 21, I think. But it was, it was around 21 that uh, I just decided I wanted kind of more of um, maybe a private life, <laughs> you know, where it was just kind of, uh, I think, I think for you to be able to handle um, uh, a, a life where you're in the public eye, it takes a, spur, a certain talent. Um, you, I mean, you have to be focused and dedicated. And I mean, there's, there's so many skills that are involved in it. And um, it just kind of wasn't me. Uh, so at that point, I, you know, I was, I was in New York and decided to get into the real estate. Uh, my mother at the time was a, was a broker in New York and I had a really good run, you know, uh, and, uh, and so I got my real estate license and started selling real estate and kind of fell in love with it. And, um, and so that's kind of what happened. It's not that I, I it's, um, it, it, it was just one of those things that it, 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 um, it was a better fit for me. Uh, so, uh, and ended up moving down to Texas and now, you know, I do real estate and I got kids and, um, and living a pretty good life, um, and, uh, simple life, <laughs> but it's, it's good. So, uh, and it's just more my speed, I guess, maybe you could say. <laughs> I think that's really cool. It's yeah. like the waves that rolled you into that spotlight and things. And when those waves rolled you in another direction, you just went with the, with the flow there. So. Yeah, yeah. So, and I mean, it's nice to be able to look back on a career that I'm real proud of, um, or career, or some of the the shows that I did, um, you know, Swans Rossing and Airborne, um, and even all my children. Um, you know, I'm proud of the work. I mean, very proud. I can't even tell you. Uh, it really means a lot. You know that that you know somebody people love the film as much as I do. So, you know, it it, it was was nice. I mean, now, you know, I'm 45 years old. So uh, it was a long time ago, you know, uh, shooting Airborne in 93. Uh, you know, it's, it's nice to look back, especially this. So I want to say thank you very much for, uh, you know, giving me the opportunity to kind of talk about it. And, and honestly, I hadn't seen a, a number of those scenes for a while. So it was nice to see them. Um, so. Oh, well, thank you for talking. That's, it's been super fun. When's the last time you've been on a pair of rollerblades? Oh, not too long ago. And actually what I want to do is, you know, we've been skating here in Galveston quite a bit, uh, but I am excited to kind of go up to, there's a skate group up in Houston uh, that skates downtown Houston at night. So 
I'm not going to be doing any ramps, but I think that I can, I, I think that I can skate, you know, the streets of uh, Houston for a night or two. So we're going to have to get you back down here. We'll go skate. Definitely. <laughs> oh, definitely. I'm there. So <laughs> how about uh, fan stories right now? Have you had any crazy fan interactions? I bet you get recognized still. I bet people ask you for a photo every now and then. Anybody that was just like, this was a crazy situation that I can't believe I'm still living. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, so uh, yeah, these days I don't get recognized. And also, well, these days I'm in Galveston and Galveston's a pretty small town. So everybody knows who I am and they don't care. <laughs> so it's great. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, I mean, many, many years ago, you had a, a number of fan experiences, but you know, uh, some of them may have been a little bit, you know, overwhelming, which I think you, it takes a little getting used to, you know, walking down the street and, you know, not, you know, not knowing how to kind of react to it. I was, you know, um, but um, that was a long time ago. That, that doesn't happen anymore. So the paparazzi's not outside your realtor yeah. office right now. Nope, not at all. And <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. You're glad for that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Tell us about fatherhood. You seem to really enjoy raising your two boys. I love it. What advice would you give young, naive Mitchell Goosen about fatherhood? Uh, the advice is um, they, the, the thing I miss most about the boys, or boys are, you know, I have two boys, but um, the kids is how small they were, you know, because when they're small, they're really small. And all of a sudden, they're not small anymore you know, they're big and you go to pick them up and they're heavy. And so you really need to appreciate that smallness, you know, cause it's really special, the baby hair and the baby skin and, you know, and so forth. Cause they seem to grow up real fast. And that's the other thing that, you know, my, my uh, kids are five and seven, just turned five and just turned seven. And it's such a great age. And it's really worth spending every moment you possibly can with them and enjoying them, uh, you know, cause at, at some point, I mean, it just goes by super fast. So it's been a real blessing for me that I spend so much time with the kids. So, um, you know, they're, they're a lot of definitely very, very good friends. We do a lot of camping. We do a lot of traveling um, and they're good sports about it. I drag them all over the place. <laughs> so, and they put up with me. So it looks like you have a lot of fun when we get a glimpse in on that. Yeah, no, it's, it's been pretty super. So, um, so. Someone gave me some good advice once with my kids they are getting a little older. They said, your kids are constantly just slowly leaving the home. Yeah. And they said, enjoy it. Cause they're just slow, you know, pretty soon they want a lot of friend time. And then pretty soon their sports and activities are taking up time. And pretty soon they want nothing to do, but be out of the house. And, uh, so, you know, you definitely enjoy them while you got them, huh? I appreciate that time when, when they still want to hold your hand and, and hang out with you. So, uh, yeah, so good uh, we had a great, great weekend this weekend. We have uh, Oktoberfest uh, down here in Galveston and it's a local, you know, everything's been so weird with COVID, you know, being shut down and so forth. Um, but of course people are starting to open back up and, and we spent the weekend at Oktoberfest and it really is a kid's festival. I mean, they got bounce houses and, you know, all kinds of fun stuff. So, I mean, we were there for hours. The boys were jumping for hours and, uh, uh, you know, with other kids, meeting other kids. And it was, it was a great weekend. So I, it's my favorite weekend. Uh, we are like month in Texas. October is great. So um, I know we were talking about you guys getting snow already. So yeah, no snow down here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> well, you should come on down at some point. You too. You too. Great. Well, well, one um, last question for you, and I know I appreciate you taking time. I know we've taken yeah. a lot of a lot longer of your time than we had. Oh, yeah. So, one last question: If you, Shane McDermott, could eat lunch with three people, alive, dead, fictitious, we don't care, who would you have lunch with? Who would I have lunch with? Hmm. So many people, so many people to think of. Um, Ernest Hemingway, 
Um, uh, Paul McCartney. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to think. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> and maybe we'd invite Gandhi along just for kicks. Yes, yes. And Gandhi, he would be, uh, he, he's, he's, a, he's a solid four. <laughs> so. <laughs> Jane, you're amazing. Thank you so much. It's so fun to keep tabs on you with uh, all you got going. And uh, I, feel, yeah. I think I speak on behalf of all the fans out there. Uh, we just appreciate the time that you give the fans and that you uh, recognize that uh, that uh, we all think that something you did is pretty special and that you added a lot to that movie. You added a lot to Mitchell Goosen. You are the airman himself, Mitchell Goosen, and, uh, and uh, we just appreciate a lot. I can't tell you how much that means to me. So thank you. So thanks. And uh, we will do this again. Okay. Well, thanks for spending some time. Appreciate it. Have okay. a good night. I'll talk to you in a bit. See you later.